Hey guys, it's been a while, but we have a new Master Yi guide for you because there's a ton of changes coming out and you guys have been bothering me with questions and I think it's time we make a YouTube video. So let's go ahead and get into it, Mr. Editor. Okay, so first up is Blade of the Rune King. So Blade of Rune King got a pretty substantial buff last patch. Its current health damage is up from eight to 12. So that's quite a substantial amount of damage. So Blade of the Rune King. Is it a good item to buy or not? Now the general Yi community thinks it's overhyped, not that good. But I actually think it's pretty good and I've been building it as a second or third item after Bloodraiser or Gunzu's pretty much every game. Now I think Wit's End is still really great into magic team comps, um, but I think Blade and Rune King definitely has its place right now. So when it comes to new Blade and Rune King buff, I'm gonna go ahead and give that a big fat S. If you, if you guys understand, it says S before A. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Next, Death Dance. So if you guys didn't see, Death Dance is getting a change. It's not necessarily a nerf or a buff. I didn't want to comment on this until after I was more sure what they were going to do because the last iteration was kind of overpowered, but the new one looks like this. So the new Death Dance gets a an AD reduction pretty substantially, and it gets a price hike of 100 gold, but Instead, we now gain armor and MR. Now, the whole purpose of Death Dance is to kind of give bruisers some kind of resistances on top of their Starags and Trinity Fours, but I think it can be a viable option for Master Yi if you're playing into full AD teams um, or mixture of teams, right? The item I'm still not too sure about if it's better or worse. I think that we just have so many options right now that we might be not building Death Dance as much as we were. So this is an item to be looking out for in the upcoming patches, but I don't know yet. My guess is we're probably going to stop building it except for in some niche cases where they have a bunch of AP and Fizz damage and you need to itemize against both. So I think it will have its purpose, just it's not going to be an every game thing like it is now. Next, we have Witsen. So Witsen has not gotten any changes this patch, but people want to know, is this still relevant? Yes, Witsen is still an amazing item, even with all the grievous wounds and blah, 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 blah. It's a good item, so I don't even need to talk more about that. Okay, so next up, we're going to talk a little bit about runes, because you guys want to know about the runes, right? And the thing is, is I feel like it's really repetitive to continue to do the runes on Yi because they really don't change. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about keystones uh, for right now. So we have in the precision tree, we have lethal tempo, press the attack, conqueror. Is that it? Fleet footwork. Yeah. So all those runes suck except for conqueror. Um, some people are still wanting to do lethal tempo. I don't do it. Maybe you can make it work. Lethal Tempo is maybe one of those runes you can make work, but I think Conquer is just a way to go, not because of the healing necessarily, but because of the extra AD that you get from Conquer. Now, with the new Blade of Rune King changes, we might be seeing some Lethal Tempo builds, but I think Conquer is just the safe bet. Mm -hmm. uh, when we go down the secondary tree here, I'm just going to list some of these out for you guys. So, in the first row, Triumph is the rune that you want. Alacrity in the second row, or Legends Bloodline, or the Tenacity, when do you bring them? Okay, so this is one that I like to talk about. Uh, the TLDR is, you bring the Alacrity, um, the attack speed, if you just don't know what to bring. You bring the Tenacity if you're up against Leona or something like that. And honestly, with the new Blade and Ring King changes, I don't think we need Bloodline at all anymore. So you're basically choosing between attack speed or Tenacity. Generally, I usually bring Tenacity, but I think attack speed feels very good as well. It's really entirely preference and up to you. Probably bring the attack speed, though. Next, we have Coup de Gras versus Last Stand. I think they're very, very similar. You can pick whichever one you want. If you're going to go Wits in, I mean, Last Stand's kind of okay. I just bring Coup de Gras. I think they're both fine. Just pick one. <laughs> just pick one. They're not that important. Secondary Tree. So you guys have been wondering about, like, Nimbus Cloak versus uh, the Ravenous Hunter, right? A lot of people have been bringing Nimbus Cloak to try and get more movement speed from smiting and flashing. Yeah, okay. I can see it being a thing. Why not? Uh, but I still think that the Domination Tree is better. Um, you, The Ravenous Hunter just heals you off of your Blade of the Rune King now, right? It heals you off of your Blood Razor. It's just, Ravenous is just really powerful and it allows you to snowball. And then, of course, you want to bring Eyeball Collection. Don't bring Sun and Impact. Stop doing that. It's just so bad. Just stop. Thank you. Um... Yeah, so, yeah, that's pretty much how we go into that tree. 
So Nimbus Cloak. A lot of people are wondering about Nimbus Cloak because Nimbus Cloak has um, the extra move speed, which is something that Mashi really wants if you're not buying boots, right? Uh, I tend to skip boots. Okay, I think it's okay, but I think Ravenous is just more important. You can bring it if you want to have some fun. Try it out. See if you like it. That's all I got to say about that one. And as for like a secondary with Nimbus Cloak, I don't think it matters. Maybe uh, some people bring Celerity. I don't know how good Celerity is right now. It doesn't look to be that good, but hey, maybe maybe it's good for you. And then we have Transcendence as well. Uh, those are two things that you could look at bringing. Uh, next, we have Hail of Blades. Are we bringing Hail of Blades? No, I don't think Hail of Blades is any good. Um, it did get a buff this patch, but it's still just not as good as Conquer. I would not bring Hail of Blades. So, Mr. Editor, can you just, like, make Hail of Blades blow up or something? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, so now we're going to talk a little bit about builds on Master Yi. So, the build has not changed much. You rush Blood Razor, then you get Gunzu's, then you make your decision. Oh, my God. This is, it's, it hasn't changed much, but it's hard to explain. So, build number one. The standard Master Yi build. Blood Razor, Gunzu's Rage Blade. There you go. That is the Master Yi build. That is your core build. That is what you typically build every game, okay? Next. After that, you're basically choosing Blade of the Rune King, Wit's End, or Death Dance, right? Those are your three options. So the TLDR of that is Blade of the Rune King against tanks, Wit's End against heavy AP damage dealers, and Death Dance against everything else, right? But, I've been running Blade of the Rune King against everything else in place of Death Dance. So, I haven't been building Death Dance at all as a third item. I've been building Blade of the Rune King, but I do build Death Dance a little bit later on into the game. So, I think Death Dance is actually really solid. Which brings up my other build that I've actually been building. Blood Razor into Blade of the Rune King into Gunzu's Rage Blade. I actually think it's not terrible. Gunzu's is a really big power spike, but Blade of the Rune King is actually doing work early and gives you a slow, and you can build an early bilge water, which will also give you a slow when you're ganking. Try it out, see if you like it. If you don't, switch back to Gunzu's Rage Blade. But I think Blade of the Rune King has a solid spot, even if they're not playing against all tanks. A lot of Yi mains may disagree, but I think if you try it, you might like it. And if you don't, you can always go back to Gunzu's. No problem there. Now for the late game, you typically just get a Sterags or whatever you need there, right? So let's look at a full Yi build here. We got Blood Razor, Blade and Rune King, Gunju's Rage Blade, Wits In, Death Death, and a Sterags Gauge. That is the dream build right there. That is the dream build. Summoner spells. What do I think about summoner spells? So I've been bringing Flash a lot because I've been suffering from getting invaded early. I think you really need to analyze your weaknesses in your game and see what the problem is. If you're getting invaded in your jungle early and you're having issues getting out, you definitely want to look at getting Flash. If you want to do a little bit more damage, I think a knight's definitely worth it. For example, in my situation, I'm finding myself getting constantly invaded when they figure out that I have Ignite and I'm getting three man gang banged in the jungle. It's just not worth it for me to bring Ignite right now. So, when I'm playing a game, I'll typically bring Flash. Again, it's entirely preference. You can bring Ignite or Flash, but right now, Flash is my go-to choice. Okay, so what is the general strategy this patch for Master Yi? So, Master Yi tends to like to farm. You don't want to take those early ganks anymore unless you're absolutely sure you're going to hit them. Right? I don't invade because that requires my team to have priority. That's something I was doing a lot of a few patches ago as I was invading. And then the enemy laners would come help the jungler and my laners wouldn't do anything. You guys all know what I'm talking about, right? So I don't typically invade anymore. If you just do a flat AFK, um, I typically do five camps into crab. And then my six camp go back by red smite and a dagger, right? Um, you do that, and then you just AFK farm your jungle. You'll get your Blood Razor before 8 minutes every game, which is how you want it to be. Now, if you do see a gank, somebody that's just obviously so overextended, go for it. Now, your teams are going to complain about you not ganking. That happens a lot. You mute them, and you hope that you can go to at least 20 minutes. Then you'll start to pop off. You have to really show yourself around 20 minutes. You have to show your team that you can carry, because they might surrender without you. So get that Gunzu's, and then start making the plays, because otherwise, your team's going to surrender whether you want them to or not. So, what is Yi's current state in the meta? Actually, right now, in pretty much every region except for Korea, Yi is pretty good. Um, and I'm not just saying that because I play on the Korea server, okay? If we pull up some statistics here from Yu.gg, Worldwide, Master Yi has a 22% ban rate with a 7.4% pick rate. So if we take a look at the regions individually here, you can see that Master Yi has a 45% ban rate in the NA server with the 6% pick rate. EU West has a 32% ban rate, right? And then you pick somewhere like Korea where we just have like an 8% ban rate and a 6% ban rate, right? Give or take, these stats might be different when the video comes out. 
But yeah, um, pretty much in every region except for Korea, Yi's pretty hotly contested. He gets a lot of bans or picks. He's really good right now. No, he doesn't need any buffs. He's he's really good right now. So if you want to climb, Yi's the way to do it. But you know, you might get you might get banned out right because people aren't wanting to play against Yi right now. Now the new skin. What do I think about the new skin? I know it's not a part of the Yi guide technically, but the new skin looks really nice. Uh, the auto animations are really good. It sounds really crisp. Really nice sound. I would say it's probably one of my favorite skins. Um, the more I use it, the more I like it. I haven't switched to any other skins since I had it. So yeah, I think the skin's definitely worth it. Um, as for chromas, I think that the white chroma is the only chroma that I really like. But yeah, the Blood Moon Master skin looks fantastic. Now, if you guys have any other questions regarding Mashi, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit this up here before somebody asks, What about crit build? No, don't do it. It sucks. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I might do some crit build for videos for that clickbait, but it's really... No, don't do it. It's not worth it. Because any, like, squishy, crit build blows up squishies. So does it. So does on hit, <laughs> right? So anything that you can kill with crit, you can kill with on hit. And with tanks coming back, I don't know. 